Hi, and welcome to the Business Academy, uh, our 2023 online series. We're uh, reaching out to different organizations, and uh, one of which is the uh, Indiana Small Business Development Center. And so we're happy to have Lori Felt, the Regional Director of the uh, NISBDC here with us. She and the SBDC team assist small businesses and startup entrepreneurs in Northwest Indiana's seven county region with business plan, uh, finding funding, marketing, and other needs. Lori previously held leadership roles in marketing, sales, and customer service at Whirlpool Corporation. She has also served as a business and marketing instructor at Purdue University Northwest and Indiana University South Bend and is active with several businesses and community organization boards. And joining Lori today is Brianna Harrelson, a business advisor for ISBDC. So we're happy to have them with us today. My name is Jane Azostek. I'm the director of the Business Academy at IU Northwest. And uh, I'm excited to have you joining us for this presentation. We are going to start, I think, with just a general overview of ISBDC, um, what your mission and organization is all about. Jana, thanks so much for the opportunity. We both really appreciate it. Um, so the Indiana Small Business Development Center, I know we go by ISBDC and that's like the longest acronym ever, um, but we are here to help small businesses and people who are starting businesses um, take the next step. Um, we provide one-on-one -on -one business counseling uh, from a business advisor. That's what we do every day, many times a day, um, as well as help with some of the areas you mentioned, like business plan or finding financing and marketing seems like a big topic right now as well. Um, so there is no charge for our services. Um, we have a fantastic team of six business advisors. Um, so we're really here just to make sure that people take the next step the most successful way possible by providing resources, advice, um, tools, market research, um, and often programs and workshops um, to help the business owner um, with areas of running a business that may not be as familiar to them. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I should offer that we work with a lot of clients. Um, we are really blessed to have, um, you know, plenty of small business owners to work with, um, over 800 in 2022, which still makes me tired when I hear the number. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, but it's about an even mix of people already in business as well as in some stage of starting. So we like to think of ourselves as being here to help with every stage of business from that startup to a growth phase, finding financing, those innovative businesses are an important piece of our client group. And that transition area where maybe um, having run a business for quite some time, an individual is looking for how to transition it to another member of the family or sell or perhaps buy a business. So we try to cover a lot of ground and meet the needs of business owners at whatever stage. Sure. I think it's important to just point out it is it is really difficult to start a business, but yet uh, it is it is not beyond anyone to start a business. But having Having the help to, to get you there is, it's priceless. So um, definitely it's just wonderful to have your organization available to people so that they can come in and figure out how to do it the right way, uh, save a lot of frustration and get those resources at the very beginning, but also to know that no matter what they face, help is there. So. Uh, that's a great message, I think, for people to take away from this presentation. Help is there. We'll get you there. So, um, Brianna, did you want to add to, to the discussion? You were a client as well. Yeah. So I actually, I own a dance studio, and I just needed that extra push to, you know, start my business. So I sat with my advisor, and she walked me step by step. 
So it's amazing that now I'm still, you know, the owner of the dance studio five years later, I'm able to do that with my clients. Just sometimes, you know, they need an ear, they need um, strategy, they need to just pull the trigger and start, you know, start the business. So we're here. And the best thing is that it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Today, in the day of social media, everybody is an expert or deemed an expert and they're charging you, you know, join my course, join my thing, join this. Um, so it's great to know that you can have those services and they don't cost you anything except for your time. So it's and amazing. That's a great point to raise. It's one of the questions I was going to ask. Uh, I think there are a lot of myths out there. And one of the myths that I have heard is that there are, um, there are requirements for you to be able to obtain services from ISBDC and that there are costs involved in receiving services from ISBDC. So yeah, I, literally all of the things that we just mentioned, one-on-one -on -one meetings with a business advisor, help with market research, business plan, and all of those other areas, uh, we don't charge for any of that. Um, we're able to do that because we receive funding from the federal government, the U.S. Small Business Administration. Um, we receive funding also from the state of Indiana, from the Indiana Economic Development Corp, and locally here from both IU Northwest and Purdue Northwest. Um, and each of those funding partners wants us to be able to offer these resources at no charge. So absolutely, um, that's how we offer everything from workshops and programs to the counseling. Sure. That's wonderful. And it's so important um, that everyone benefits from a strong economic base. So having those successful businesses benefits everyone, not just the business owner. So it makes sense that those services would be available. You know, we pay part, we pay taxes, right? So we, we want, uh, some of those benefits from the government to help us out. So um, everyone listen, you do not have to pay for ISPDC and the services are open to everyone. No qualifications required, no qualifying criteria or anything like that. So um, how does an entrepreneur or business owner receive services from you? What What's the process first getting involved with you? So we um, try to be very accessible. Um, so clients come to us from a lot of different ways. Um, it could be easy as, as easy as calling us or emailing us. And I'll put some of that information in the chat so that it's easy to have. Um, we do have a website, of course, where they can fill out a request for our services if they're interested in doing that. Um, I'll pull that up in just a minute. Uh, so the process is as simple as getting assigned to a business advisor when we ask you um, how you'd prefer to meet. You know, would you prefer to meet virtually or by phone or um, in person? We make ourselves available actually many different places throughout the region because we know nobody wants to drive an hour or has the time to do so. Um, so that advisor can be as accessible as a Zoom conference like we're doing right now, or um, we're happy to go to a client's business location or a convenient location between the two of us. We do have our main office in Crown Point at the Purdue Tech Center. Um, but again, by no means do people have to come here in order to receive business advisor services. Sure. In fact, you have an advisor that is on the IU Northwest campus once a week, I believe, and then uh, other places, as you said, around, around the area, around the yeah. seven counties. We're really um, excited to have more availability in specifically in Lake County. So uh, to, to your point, Vince Beecham, another member of our business advising team, is at IU Northwest at the School of Business. We're really grateful to have a room where he can meet clients there, I think typically on Thursdays, but once a week. Um, as well, um, we have a physical presence in um, Hammond at the Purdue Northwest Commercialization Center. 
Um, so that's uh, easily accessible from I-94 on Indianapolis Boulevard. And we have um, a couple of advisors who meet there regularly as well. Um, and we find ourselves in all kinds of places. I just uh, agreed to a meeting in Morocco, Indiana, which is in Newton County. You may not have ever heard of that town, but um, we're, we're happy to also meet clients in smaller towns in the region as well. Sure, that's wonderful. What kind of things um, would be helpful for a person to have in order before they come and meet with an advisor? And I don't, Brianna might want to talk to that. Um, what were some of the things that your advisor was asking you for? Yeah, so I definitely had the business idea, the plan. I had it all. I just had to actually go through the steps to pick what legal entity I wanted to be and register with the Secretary of State. But I say for most of the clients that I've been seeing, they're already like operating, meaning they they do what they want to do. They just need to be legal <laughs> and, you know, put it on paper. So definitely a business idea or um, if you're doing business already, like where do you want to go with that? Like, what's the goal? Are you looking to, you know, maybe you do dessert and maybe you want to, you know, partner with a, a, a local store to get your desserts in there. Or maybe you want a brick and mortar, like tell me what your vision is so I can help get you there. So really just an idea of what you want to do for those who are considering starting a business. And then for those who are already in business, how can we take your business to the next level? So is that marketing? Is that you know, maybe financial projections is that, you know, maybe you, you're looking to export your product, whatever it is, just be clear on that. Or maybe we, maybe your session is to let's get clarity around what those next steps are. Um, but yeah, for, for new businesses, aspiring businesses, people already in businesses, large businesses, maybe you're looking to open a second store or a, a third store. So we help in various areas of the, the business life cycle. Um, we're, we're there for your support and for your needs. Sure. So an idea and the services that you receive will depend on what that idea is and where you're at with the idea. We really try to avoid a cookie cutter approach. Um, each meeting is different. Each business owner is different. Each um, opportunity is different. So we're trying to have a conversation and learn from the business owner where they are, what they're looking to do, um, understanding their motivations and expectations from the business, and then plugging in help and resources based on all of that information from the business owner. And I would imagine that you do a lot of training. Um, do you have training that is available on your website or um, I know that you do face-to-face -face training, uh, which we can talk about in a minute, but um, you also have training programs on your website that they can watch we at do. Their convenience? Yeah, um, we do train in a variety of different ways. And by the way, I don't know that I specifically shared that we're really part of a statewide organization. This is our website. It's isbdc.org. There's that long acronym again. Um, so someone throughout the state of Indiana could receive resources um, from ISBDC. There's a center in 10 different locations in the state. And actually you can access at the training and education tab, um, recorded uh, webinar material, not even just from Northwest Indiana, but from anywhere in the state of Indiana uh, through the ISBDC. So I hope you can see my screen. Hmm. I think I got diverted a little bit there. Let me get back to where I was. There we go. So I'm so sorry, it seems like we're having a difficulty with the scrolling on this. I can bring it up from uh, my side if you'd like. Let's try it one more time. Okay. 
So you see the training and education tab, and then it's, hmm. well, let me go ahead and share from mine and see if. Yeah. It's a training and education. Yeah, up at the top is a tab. And if you scroll down, you'll see online trainings that are available to watch on YouTube. Okay. And you'll see a mix of upcoming webinars as well as in-person trainings throughout the state. So if you would toggle to um, Northwest Indiana over where it says centers, you'll see our upcoming events. And I know this may be recorded for later use, so it could be that some of these events will have passed in time. Um, but you'll see that upcoming, we have a specific event around some resources we're sharing with underserved entrepreneurs coming up. We have a whole marketing series that we're really excited to be um, holding at IU Northwest. Um, so we'll be providing uh, a fantastic marketing uh, trainer, Chelsea Whittington and her team to talk about things like public speaking, use of video or YouTube, social media, and so on. Um, we literally just taught a QuickBooks uh, workshop yesterday and have another one upcoming in June um, where you learn, first of all, what's important about bookkeeping for your business and why is it worth the, the time to establish good books. And then how do you use a tool like QuickBooks um, effectively uh, to keep books for your business and understand how money works in your business better? Um, one of the topics that we've delved in quite a bit um, this year is around minority women and veterans certification programs. So you'll see there we do a monthly lunch and learn webinar specifically on that topic with a different speaker each month. So um, that's typically the third Wednesday of the month. Um, and in June, we'll be talking with actually the Procurement Technical Assistance Center advisor, who will share ways to sell products and services to federal agencies, government agencies. Okay. So um, we're always listening for what topics may be of most interest to our clients, small businesses in general. Um, we often do a startup 101 format, a webinar for that idea, that person who has an idea and is thinking about it and is not sure what's involved in the journey of starting. Um, so that's something that we do probably every other month area. Um, and is often a way that a startup first enters um, receiving ISBDC services. Okay, is there anything else on the website you'd like to show or? So um, I know we tend to think of ourselves as jacks of all trades, um, you know, um, helping businesses in a variety of different ways. Um, but if you would click on programs, we have access to some specialty advising in a number of different areas. I know Bree mentioned exporting, and that's something that we are just thrilled to be able to help people with who are ready to sell what they make or sell outside of the US. Mm -hmm. um, agribusiness is another specialty area. If you have a food business or something related to growing food, um, we have specialty advisors with huge expertise in that area. And so manufacturing is another one um, where we have someone who can help you make what you sell, um, whether you're a one person business doing it in your basement currently, trying to get out of your basement maybe, or whether you're an established manufacturing firm who is trying to do it more efficiently. So it's definitely been something we've been excited to add to our toolbox, um, those specialized services that meet a need where a business owner needs somebody with a lot of depth in a particular aspect of their business. That's fantastic. I never, it, I'm, I don't know, I guess I tend more towards the service side. I hadn't even really thought about the manufacturing side and having, having that available. So each of us as advisors is different. And, you know, we have sort of our um, areas of experience and expertise, but 
I'm, I've definitely spent a lot of time in manufacturing companies and I love companies that make things small, yeah. tiny or big. Um, so to be able to help, um, you know, a food producer make their food more efficiently, um, grow their margins, I think is an incredible opportunity. On the exporting side, I should really mention, we've had a number of regional companies go through that export accelerator program. And just to brag on one of them a little bit, um, Be Nutty Gourmet Peanut Butter was recognized last week or the week before as the Small Business Exporter of the Year by the SBA. Two years ago, they participated in the accelerator. They had not exported before. And they've grown in that area so much um, that they got a nice, big trophy and a lots of pats on the back down in Indy um, at a special event in May. That's wonderful. We're pretty proud of them. Absolutely. That's very cool. I love to hear these stories. <laughs> um, Me too. The stories are the best. Yeah. Are there any others you'd like to share? Come to mind. Oh my gosh. Um, there are a lot of great stories. Um, I'll throw one out in Brie. I'm sure you have have some as well. Um, but uh, just this past Friday, I visited again um, a woman who ended up buying a small needlework and embroidery store. Um, she'd never been an entrepreneur before, never really had much business experience, but loves that type of craft. She'd worked for the owner as a side gig because she loves it so much. And the owner was aging up and wanted to retire. So we helped Sarah through the process of getting financing. And I will definitely share, I think she'd very much admit that was a scary process to go through. Yeah, she, yeah. Like anything else, an entrepreneur has a journey, but she was able to get enough financing and now she runs that store um, and she's learning the ropes. And like any other startup, um, there's ups and downs. Um, but I think she's pretty proud of having taken that step and making it work. I bet she is. That's wonderful. Brianna, you look like you have a story too. <laughs> well, I just started in April, I believe. So I've only had about three clients uh, that will ramp up after this event coming up. But one of my clients, I had noticed that he was needing some just better bookkeeping skills and tools. So he went to the, he, he went yesterday to the uh, session that we had on accounting and QuickBooks. And he texts me like, oh my gosh, like this has changed the way that I've been doing business. Um, we had already sat down previously and talked about, you know, just making sure that your books are good. You know, if you ever want to grow or sell your business, you have to make sure that that's, you know, that's important. So he texts me, he was excited. And I know that that will just help him continue to grow by knowing how to keep accurate books. So that's a, a brief story. I'm sure I'll have more when I'm, when I've been with uh, the ISBDC for as many years as Lori has. So. <laughs> I always think from the law side and a lot of people, you know, they key in on, oh, I need to, I need to form my LLC or form my corporation. And, and then when you, they, they don't have those proper bookkeeping and proper procedures, we call them corporate formalities, right? They don't have those things in place. Well, if you don't have those things in place, then you've wasted your money on, on the LLC or the corporation because you have to follow those formalities in order for you to get the protection that led you to get that to begin with. So yeah, bookkeeping is huge. You have to do it right away. You know, one of the hardest things that I think we saw time and again during COVID was um, that people were trying to apply for disaster or COVID related funding. And because they didn't have books, uh, they couldn't produce a profit and loss statement. They weren't able to get the funds that they were really entitled to. Um, and, and really a tough thing. Um, and you know, we're, we're, we learned a lot from that. We learned that we need to help people more with bookkeeping. So we're trying as, in as many ways as possible to help people take control of their businesses. And that means your books as well. We want people to be successful in business, um, but 
there are things that you have to do a certain way to make sure that you're doing that. So come to the ISBDC and, uh, you know, here at IU Northwest, we have a program. There are, are multiple programs in the area. Uh, all of us work together to try to help you. Um, we refer a lot of people to ISBDC, and I know that the opposite is true. So um, if you are wanting to start a business, there are resources to help you make sure that you do it the right way, that, that you're protected and that you're successful. So ISBDC, uh, Lori, is there anything else you want to add? Because I want to make sure that we get your contact information out there for people who would, would want to come to you for help. Yeah, um, the website we just looked at is isbdc.org. And an easy way to get in touch with our whole team is to email northwest at isbdc.org. Um, as mentioned, we have a team of six business advisors. Um, so that's a way of getting in touch with us and we can assign an advisor to help you um, that's most convenient or most suited to um, connecting with you and helping you. So, and this is usually a pretty quick turnaround, right? So it's not like you make an appointment and you have to wait three months. Usually Definitely not. <laughs> turnaround, right? Yeah, yeah. We really try to um, be as responsive as possible. I mean, at times things do get busy, but we're in touch with people certainly within 48 hours, um, if not sooner. Um, and it's all about um, setting up something that's convenient for the business owner as well as the advisor. So that might be virtual or it might be in person and we just try, try to carve out something um, that works best. Again, everybody's different. So we try to meet you where you are. Wonderful. All right, well, anything else you would like to add? Well, really a, a pleasure to chat with you about this. I mean, honestly, I'm when you're talking about stories, I'm thinking of one that might be close to your heart, Jaina. I, I just saw Lindsay Liesenfeld of Truly Tease yesterday. Another cool story, and I think she got her beginnings as a student at IU Northwest. Yeah, yeah it was an assignment in a marketing class that started her business, so that's very cool. Yeah. And uh, there's no stopping her. She's doing really well. <laughs> and interesting, I think she started off with some uh, classmates, but uh, she's the one that, that continued on with the, uh, with the business. So mm -hmm. yeah, another neat story. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you here with us as well. And I hope that this is um, one of the videos that we'll get a lot of information from glad to be able to share your services out to the world and um, hope that, that it drives some, some business your way so that we can get some more businesses out in the world. Happy to help. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks so much, Jana. Absolutely.